uh, I'm sometimes afraid of my own frustration and temper at the absolute foolishness in our nation that sometimes I just wanna stand in the middle of the street and scream. And quite frankly, the passion around that sometimes frightens me. Welcome to the Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Don't forget, the Father State is on subscribe star now. Click the link in the video description to support the work. And thank you all in advance. I have with me Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis. She is the senior minister of Middle Collegiate Church in New York City. Amazing. She's also the author of Fierce Love, A Bold Path to Fero Ferocious Courage and Rule-Breaking Kindness That Can Heal the World. Um, Dr. Lewis, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jesse Lee. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, what is, uh, how would you define fer ferocious courage? What is that exactly? The kind of courage that makes people run into a burning building to rescue babies, the kind that makes teachers throw themselves in front of their kids when a gunman walks in, the kind of courage that might make police actually go in and try to save the kids as opposed to waiting for command. But I don't know that we have to always get hurt with ferocious courage. It might be um, truth telling. It might be marching in the streets. It might be confronting a parent or a child or a lover uh, about behaviors that wound us. And how, um, how would that heal the world? Yeah. In the first instance, I think sometimes we have to put our bodies in the way of evil and brokenness, Jesse Lee. And uh, I think we know we've seen that be successful in the world when John Lewis marched across the Pettus Memorial Bridge with all those um, you know, protesters to get voting rights. When Fannie Lou Hamer worked with my great uncle George uh, and kept uh, registering Mississippians to vote, those were, those were the kinds of sufferings, the kinds of ferocious courage that were healing and redemptive and transformative. I think also, I would say, uh, as a child who grew up with a strong black father uh, who grew up in Mississippi, who was a don't, don't speak unless you've been spoken to, type dad for a long time. Um, ferocious courage taught me to finally stand up to him and say, dad, here's the better way for us to relate to each other. And that confrontation, though painful, and quite frankly, though it happened more than once, is why we had a healed, beautiful, loving relationship. Nice. And so how has the book been received? I think it's been received well. You know, we can always we can always sell some more books. So let me hold that. <laughs> but uh, one, it's it's a. Uh, my publishers said this. They hoped it would be a slow burn book that would be bought over and over again. And what really blows my mind, Jesse Lee, is when someone calls me or shoots me an email and says, "I gave the book to my mother, and then my mother started a book group with your book." Uh, or uh, Otis Moss, the Third Church Trinity in Chicago. Uh, we did a book a book talk, and and the and the grandmothers, you know, fall in love with the book. Right. There, there's a way in which it's a word of mouth, honest, candid, uh, naked portrayal of my story that I think actually makes people feel they can be honest and naked and transparent. And I'm really proud of that. Well, congratulations on the book. In the book, Thank you it. talk about how divided our culture is. What, how, define culture for me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in the strictest sense, I think we tell our audience that culture is the language, the food, the mores, the values of a people, of a system. And so our culture, of course, is multicultural. There are many different kinds of cultures inside American culture. Uh, those of us who are African-American, North-South, uh, regional cultures, uh, straight cultures, uh, 
queer cultures. But the one I'm talking about is the public square, Jesse Lee, where we have stopped talking to each other and we're talking at each other, where Republicans and Democrats used to sit at a dinner table and say, not me, I think less government. And someone would say, I think more government. Right. But we weren't demonize one another. Uh, when you get to the place where the where electeds will boo the sitting president and call him a liar, when you get to the place where uh, a, a president who lost an election can incite an insurrection, that is divided culture. There's no um, the, the conflict level is so high that there's only winners and losers and there's only demons and angels and there's nothing gray in the middle and we know that that can't possibly be real. But Amazing. that's how we portray it. Yeah. When, you, when you mention uh, ferocious courage, do you have fear? Do I have fear? Yes. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely I have fear. And, and why do you have fear? Hmm. I'm afraid that I could be standing on any corner with my grandbabies. And because guns are so prolific and easy to get, somebody having a bad day will see me and my little mocha chocolata babies, their mom is black, their father's white, and just think, I'm gonna shoot them. I'm afraid that I could be in a theater in New York where I love the theater, and I'll be plotting my exit, how to get out. Uh, I'm sometimes afraid of my own frustration and temper at the absolute foolishness in our nation, that sometimes I just want to stand in the middle of the street and scream. And quite frankly, the passion around that sometimes frightens me. I might stand in the middle of the street and scream. So is that why you moved away from Chicago? You were afraid of getting hurt by some black people? Oh, no, no, no. Who were no, you afraid no, of then <laughs> with the guns? Who were the mass shooters? White, white guys with white, mostly white guys with guns are the mass shooters. Oh, oh, I see. What you, oh, so you are yeah. not afraid of the blacks killing? Because you lived in Chicago for a while, right? I grew up in Chicago. My, so my family's black. I'm, I'm not afraid of black people. Why not? <laughs> Why are you not afraid? So many blacks are getting killed by blacks. Why are you not afraid of that? I'm not afraid of the kind of, I mean, that's a great question, but I'm not afraid of the kind of personal violence that, that can happen that I wish wouldn't happen as a clergy, as a revolutionary lover. I'm not afraid of that. I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid of domestic um, danger. I'm not afraid of boys on the corner acting out. I'm afraid of assault style weapons being purchased in ways with ease by 18 year olds who are being taught hatred on the internet and they go out and do something about it. That's, That's amazing. Um, why is the uh, cultural divided? Mm -hmm. Why is it divided? Yes, you write about that in book. Why is it divided? I think, I think it's always been divided, Jesse Lee. How about that? I think it's always been divided. I think we, America was built on a fault line of race and class and caste. Uh, we've curated some togetherness, but we still are pretty apartheid. We are still pretty rich live over here, poor live here. We're still pretty black schools here, white schools here. Uh, we're still pretty uh, divided around gay and straight. And we're definitely divided around um, ideology. Amazing. We have not, we haven't, we have not, we haven't had the courage, not enough of us have had the courage to have conversations across the divisions that would make us one people, one people with different opinions. We haven't had enough conversation. You know, now that you define culture for me. When I was growing up, it was only one culture, and that mm -hmm. was America. Yeah. Anyone that was born here, it didn't matter the color and all that. They mm -hmm. were just American. They were, It was not divided, so it made for an amazing country. And I guess now that we've allowed all these other people to come here from other parts of the world, it has divided because those people that come here from other parts of the world don't seem to fit in 
with America because they have a different mindset. Do you think it was a mistake to let all these other people come into America? I I think I would I think I would question that premise just a little, Jesse Lee, if you don't mind. I think America is a country of immigrants. You and I, our people didn't immigrate, right? We were we were we born didn't here, right? We were, well, well, we were born here after our people were brought here. But the rest of the country, our indigenous siblings and African Americans, uh, indigenous people on the land from the beginning, African Americans brought to the land to farm and till the land as slaves. That outside of that enslavement and outside of indigenous people, everybody else here comes from someplace else. They come from Poland. They come from Great Britain. They come from, you know, um, Spain. So, so we were built. Uh, in the context of difference. So I don't think the people immigrating now cause the division. I think what causes the division is a resistance to the plurality of the society, right? Like if what we think means American is white, straight, wealthy men or landowners or not Mexican, not um, Jamaican, you know, not Dominican, not African, if that's how we roll, then we have that kind of tension. But America has always been a, like a, they say melting pot, that's not true, more like a salad, right? There's, there's all kinds of diversity here always. But I think because America is becoming more brown, I think that there is a resistance in white culture to the diversity. Amazing. That's what I think. I agree with you that it seemed that the Indians were here, but it was not America. They were just sitting around living in tents and doing nothing, smoking peyote. And if uh, if the white man had not dis uh, discovered America and believed in God and with the help of God, they created the greatest country on this side of heaven, there would be no America. Am I right? No, I think I, I think I don't think you're right. Why not? It was think, a white man well, who I founded and built the country, right? Well, I don't think I don't think the indigenous people were sitting around in tent smoking peyote. <laughs> I think they were. I think they were living. <laughs> they with were the killing land. one another, riding horses, and doing nothing. You know what I mean? So I know no. I understand what you're saying about that. They were doing more than just smoking peyote and getting high. They were killing one another, eating one another, and stuff like that. I do agree to that. No, I'm not saying that. Oh, you're I'm not, not saying, saying that? that at all. What no. else were they doing there? They were living in the land, on the land, raising children, um, hunting buffalo, raising corn, making food, making children, living on the land. And then, and then the Pope told the Spaniards, go and discover America. And then the whites came and then the whites took the land. Do you and agree then, that if it wasn't for the white people finding and creating the greatest country, there would be no America? No, we would not be here. We would be somewhere else. You agree to that? I agree that this nation was named for Amerigo Vespucci, who was a, 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 a ship runner who, quote, discovered America. Right. So this land... And was he white? He was Spanish. And this land was called... Turtle Island by the indigenous people. So no, it wasn't America. Really? But it, could have, it could have had a different trajectory. It could have been different. So it yeah. wasn't Columbus who discovered America? No, he found it, but he didn't discover it. It was already here. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't Columbus. Um, it wasn't Columbus. So if Columbus had not found or discovered, however you want to call it, and then got together with some other white men and with the help of God and created the greatest country on this country. You notice everybody and their mama trying to come here. It's not like it's not the best place. Uh, would there be an America? There would be something. But it wouldn't be America, right? No. Amazing. And, and, Do and you, are you grateful for that? that it, am I grateful for? That they did found and created the greatest country on this side of heaven, America, that the white man did do that. Are you grateful for that? No. Oh, you're not grateful? No. Why not? Because I'm embarrassed. Why are I'm you ashamed, embarrassed? I'm ashamed that, I'm ashamed that this land was stolen 
I'm ashamed that my ancestors were kidnapped and built it. And I'm ashamed that white supremacy still hijacks um, the agenda here. And that's not all the white people, but the founding principles of our nation leave so many people behind. Amazing. Let me ask, um, you mentioned, um, oh, can you define white supremacy for me? Because I don't know what that means. Yes, you do. What does it mean? Don't you? No, don't I you? really don't. Because I hear a lot of black people saying that, and I wonder why they think that white people are superior to them, because I hear a lot of black people calling white people white supremacists, and from, in my mind, it sounds like they believe that white people are superior to them. Well, that's not what, that's not what it means. What does it mean there? It means, it means that since the founding of the nation, uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote a paper called Notes on the State of Virginia. And in that paper, he was trying to convince Paris to come to, to this nation. And he described blacks as not as beautiful as whites, not as, emo not as emotional as whites, not as loving as whites. And he began a trajectory of pseudoscience that sought to prove that white people, white skulls, white beauty, white language, white everything was better than blacks or indigenous. And that's the beginning of white supremacy. And that's so, what it means. It oh, mean, that's why it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that I, as a black person, think the white people are superior. It so means why that would you white, use that word, the whites, supremacy? Can we pause, can we, it can implies we, that you believe that. No, it, it doesn't imply. Can we stop for a minute? Yes. This is not the conversation I thought we were having today, and I feel very uncomfortable. No, no, no. I'm just following about something to get an understanding from you. Yeah, but I, I feel uncomfortable. Like, this tape's going to go out in the world, and some of these things that we're saying don't make me feel comfortable at all. But you write about I, I, them, I, and you talk I, about I, them, so I just want a better understanding, because I'm black and slow. To, a lot of things I just don't understand. That's all. I don't feel comfortable. All right, relax. We're doing fine. No, I, I know I'm doing fine. I'm saying I don't feel comfortable. Oh, but relax. So I'd, I'd, like, I'd like our producer, whoever that is, to pause tape. I'm not, I'm not going to do this interview right now. It doesn't feel comfortable to me. But all I'm doing is following up on what you have said to get an understanding why you feel so uncomfortable. Because it doesn't feel like we're having a conversation. It feels like you're, it doesn't feel like we're having a conversation. And I feel uncomfortable that if when we put this in the, in the world, it might not be clear what my point of view is. No, like you're very clear. You're my very point clear. of view, so my point of view is not that white people are superior to me. My point of view was not that I'm afraid of black people in Chicago and that's why I moved. So, so far there's three or four things that feel to me like we're not having a good understanding. And I'm not kidding. I'm not talking anymore until they stop the tape and we take a break. Well, re relax, I, we'll just, and see if you still feel uncomfortable, let me know, all right? I'm not gonna do this right now. I'm always grateful to come and talk to people about, about new ideas, and it's lovely to talk about my book, but this conversation does not feel comfortable. And to start a half hour late and for it not to be comfortable feels to me like it's not supposed to happen today. Oh, so are you saying that you don't want to... Uh... I'm saying I'm done today. Oh, I think I said it three times now. I'm not talking today about this. If we want to try again, we can. I can send you questions that make me feel comfortable. So far, it's am I afraid of black people? Nope. So far, is it do I think white people are superior? Nope. So far, it's not it doesn't feel like a good conversation. I'm a little surprised to hear you say that because you said that one of the problems with culture is that and Republicans and Democrats that we don't that they don't sit and yeah. and agree and disagree and talk about things anymore. Yeah. You right. said that they tend not to do that. It looked like you're about to do the same thing. I'm about to stop talking because I could go to another, any room in the world, any room in the country, any room. I also get to have the ferocious courage to say, I'm not comfortable. So I'm not comfortable right now. I know, and, but you're not showing you, per, ferocious courage by running. I'm not running. I'm just not comfortable. And well, I'm not what does that do mean right you're now. not comfortable? I don't know what it means. 
I think you know what it means. I think it means that I'm not comfortable. It doesn't feel like it's, it's a good dialogue right moment, this moment, and I would like to pause. We can try it again another time. I'd like that, but I can't do it right now. It doesn't feel comfortable to do it right now. Amazing. Like the product, that like the product isn't going to represent what I'm trying to say. I, it doesn't feel that way. But you're clearly saying what you're trying to say, and I, and I'm just getting a better understanding to understand. Because you're helping me to understand the culture better. If we're going to do it again, then I would have I would send questions that help you know, like culture. What do I mean by white supremacy? What are the terms that I'm trying to use? And what's the message I'm trying to put in the world? I'm trying to put in a world, a message of ferocious courage that allows for good conversations. And I'm also a human and I'm saying, this conversation doesn't feel to me like it's going how I would like it to go. So and before I, I you run, can, can I ask I'm, you about I'm not some running, other I'm just part? No. Before you run, can I ask you about some other part of your book? Not today. Amazing. I know. I just can't do it today. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> so you want what you want you want me to ask only what you want me to ask, what you want to talk nope. about? I want I want to have a dialogue. That's what we're doing. It doesn't Jesse Lee, I'm not gonna talk more right now about it. I don't feel like it's going well and I would like to stop. Well, can we like at least talk it, about you being a minister and what that life for you? I'm a minister and I'm an activist and I'm standing up for myself right now and saying this doesn't feel comfortable. What made you I, decide I, to become I a minister? A, I, I had one hour scheduled for this and it's three minutes to one hour now. So it feels like it's not going to go as well as you or I would like. And I'd like us to pause and see if we can get it on the calendar again. That's what I'd like to do. Well, I can't force you to see, of course. I, I am a little surprised that you're running, but. What, that you're saying I'm running? is exactly why I'm not gonna talk. Because you are putting a, a meaning on that that is not true for me. I'm well, not right running. mean that I'm you have done. to leave, right? You gotta I'm, leave. I'm, I'm saying I'm done. I'm saying I scheduled this from three to four, it's 3.58, I'm finished for today. And that's not running, that's being finished. There's a connotation to running that doesn't feel comfortable. That's not what I'm doing, I'm just, I'm just it's not going well, we're gonna stop. Can I at least ask you one more question before you go? That depends on what it is. About Obama. You mentioned Obama earlier. Can I ask you something about him? We'll see. Go ahead. I'll ask it. We'll see if I'm going to answer it. You said that uh, you mentioned some about the president starting an insurrection, causing an insurrection. And I want to know, were you surprised when Obama caused the insurrection by using Obama Black Lives Matter? Obama didn't cause an matter? insurrection. Obama was, didn't cause an insurrection. But when you said... I was talking about Trump. Oh, you're talking about Donald Trump? Oh, I thought you meant Barack Obama. Remember when Black Lives Matter with chanting? I'm, I'm seriously, this is exactly what I'm talking about. What do you Whatever mean? this is, this is not what we're doing. I, I did not imply that the President Obama had an insurrection. Oh, I thought when you That's said you the saying President. That. We, you no, were, no, you didn't think that. I'm yes, I did. Now. I was thinking about I'm, when I'm, Black Lives I'm, Matter with chanting. I'm really sorry that I'm going to go, but I really am going to go. And, it, and whoever plays this, cuts it up. If I see it in the world without having to approve it, I'm not going to be happy. No, we're this not going to cut going, it up. You got to worry. We're, we're presenting it as is. There's no, we're not going to present, but we're not going to play this tape anywhere. Well, you might not be able to play it, but I'm playing it. No, you're not going to play it. Yes, I am going to play it. As well. I'm why? sorry? Why are you going to play something that didn't go well? It's not, I mean, it's going well as far as I'm concerned. We, I thought we were having an amazing dialogue. I didn't expect no, you sir, to we're run. Not having an, you're not having an amazing dialogue. You are misinterpreting what I'm saying. I'm not interpreting like, it at all. I'm just like, asking like questions. Like I'm like just I'm asking questions. Beautiful people in the world, if you hear this, I'm Jackie Lewis. I'd love to talk with you later. She ran. What the... That was Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis, senior minister of Middle Collegiate Church in New York City. And, and really, y'all heard the interview? I was just asking about her book, uh, asking about white supremacy, why they think white people are superior to them, and things like And she was saying exactly what she wanted to say about Donald Trump and everybody else, to be honest. But, I'm a little surprised because I thought when she mentioned the Republicans and the Democrats can't get together and we used to be able to talk, I was expecting her to talk. I really was. What the? But she put her tail between her legs and she's gone.
Ain't no use in prayer for her no more. She gone. But anyway, folks, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, uh, share, and check us out on subscribe star. Click the link in the video description to support the work. Lord knows we got a lot of work to do. And check out our merch. It's amazing. Why History Month is coming up next month, July. July just feels right. Thank you all for tuning in. I do appreciate it. God created man in his image. He gave the power and authority to him. Because we've been raised by women, they know a lot what they do. Keep a man away from God. And until man realized that, he has that woman nature that has been imposed upon him by mama. He has that woman nature that has been imposed upon him by mama. He can repent. He can repent by forgiving. He can repent. And God will change his nature. When man changed, then our family will change, and our community will change. The power is in the man. When man changed, then our family will change, and our community will change. The power is in the man. When man changed, then our family will change, and our community will change.